Good morning and welcome to our Live Talk program. This is Lloyd Gubb here, your host on Red 5 Reform Radio, doing our Live Talk program covering natural health on this year, Wednesday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, I'm looking at a topic, different view of health and how to treat the body, different view of health and how to treat the body as I continue with our Live Talk program, the theme for this week. Welcome again. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I thank you for the blessings of this day for the blessings of life, dear Lord, and health. And I pray, dear Lord, that you may be with us as we study and I share these thoughts. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm looking here um, this day with you at um, the different view of health or a different view of health and how to treat the body. So different view of health and how to treat the body. And as you know, we have a different view of health as the general public uh, in in the in especially when we talk about disease and how disease are transmitted and how we treat the body and so again I continue with this premise uh this week for uh, that is better to live a life better live life as I am in the world but I'm not, I'm not off the world as much as possible so better to live life in the sense that we're in the world but we're not off the world and when we do this then it kind of it frees us up as I say, to a certain degree, where we can um, approach various different subjects, various different topics in a way that we normally wouldn't, and we can do life differently, understanding some different points of view. And health is one of those things also when it comes on to how to deal with the body when it is either contracted a disease or when it's developed a disease because of lifestyle practices. How would you treat the body? How do you view the disease and how to prevent it's always better to prevent and also to, uh, than to try to cure and so this basically is my premise and the idea here what i was saying is the gentile systems were built for them and not for the righteous and they even abuse and oppress their own so we worse hence it is best to live as independent and self-sufficient as possible from their system with a healthy dose of suspicion. So this uh, applies um, to health uh, also. And, you know, right now there's two things going on. There's the flu season, and then there's this outbreak of what we they call the coronavirus. And I've covered this before, but I'm going to spend my time talking about this and applying, learning this concept here that I've been talking about this week upon this idea. And... Uh, the the reason why, if you think about even the way how uh, disease is contracted, the way how it spreads, and the way how uh, they normally would treat it, the whole idea is, is a different methodology. The methodology from contracting it to treating it is different from the way we view it. Um, normally, how they view bacteria and viruses, they view it that it happens, and what you must do, the aim is to kill the bacteria and virus, which, as I say, to a certain possible certain way to a certain level we do accept that to a certain degree you know but we have a different view our view is or i should explain my view <laughs> i don't know if it's ours uh, but my view is um, my understanding is uh, normally is the best concept to explain it is with garbage uh, normally when you have garbage then the flies come so you could spend all your time trying to kill the flies which will put a dent in it it will help if you have different methods and means to kill the flies um, but it's also important to understand that the flies is one of the things because they become a vector they carry the disease but also one has to think about the garbage and think about clean up the garbage so where there's uncleanness then normally there's a, there's a bigger opportunity for disease viruses bacteria whatever it is to be present so normally you start with cleansing in health natural health in biblical health and then you go to dealing with the disease or you do both you try to de deal with the symptoms uh, and you deal with also the cause in the system the focal point is to deal first with um, and mainly with just the results the symptoms the the virus the bacteria which has its place because as i say if you have a bunch of flies, you can get some fly traps and catch the flies. You can limit the amount of flies. You might not eliminate them. But in the meantime, it will be good to start disinfecting, cleaning, washing, sterilizing things. 
and what you do, you do and work on both fronts. Uh, but when you deal with the regular system, the focal point is always superficial. So this works in um, morality, this work in social construct, and it's also work in health. Um, normally, it's a superficial way of dealing with it. You deal with the symptoms, you don't deal with the cause in medicine. And so it is in also people's personal life. They deal with the end result. You put, you know, you put lipstick on it and, and, or you put some paint over it and you cover it. You put a facade, but inside is rotten. So we want to always deal with the rot and we always start off from cleansing and you clean first and then you nourish or you clean and nourish together. And you get a better result. So this is a different methodology. And so the primary thing in the secular world is always how to look good. And when we talk about the, 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 anytime there's an outbreak, um, generally the, 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 the individuals that are running the government or the health department, they're concerned with first, you know, how, how this is going to affect the market. How is going to affect the global markets, the financial markets? How is it going to affect us as an individual? They're not first thinking, well, we need to approach this with our honesty, clarity, you know, with, with clearness, you know, with transparency and go at it and go at it in a way and be honest about what's going on. Uh, they're more worried about, well, it's going to cost them money. So it's a different methodology. And when you watch it, you always watch that there's a be a disease and then all of a sudden numbers start ramping up. And so where these numbers ramping up? You know, bacteria does multiply so that could account for some of the ramping up of the numbers where there's more cases are just quickly being um, reported. But what you find, especially in countries that does have a lot, a lot of freedom of press, they tend to want to hide the numbers uh, at first so that it doesn't look so bad. And like They don't want to create panic. And then they start to try to do methods that are only to hit the disease with drugs. So that's the only method. And if you remember with the Ebola scare, um, and it was scary, it was real, uh, it wasn't a scare, it was a scary situation. One of the best ways to figure out how to treat people was to keep them hydrated um, because they were vomiting so much so they would get dehydrated and they'd die before the body, the immune system could learn the disease and clear it from the system. So you find that um, even though there was the, the, the push was to get vaccine, get this, get that, get that, well, the process would be different if you're in a different mindset. So when you're living and you're not so caught up with the system and you have to um, say things to please the system or to line up with the system or you're part of the system, you tend to can look at things a little bit different. You know, if you have any disease that is connected, that one of the symptoms will be fever, one of the main things you have to do, and especially if I should say fever, vomiting, diarrhea, you have to hydrate hydrate at an extreme um any way possible you know and this would be through through the the mouth through the anus um via iv any way possible to keep the person hydrated because the person is going to die you know and then she might explain this way she says simply if you have a fire you normally first thinking is to put water in it and that's logical you want to cool the situation down and try to douse it to stop the you know, smother it so that the, the flame doesn't burn and kill and destroy it, everything. It's the same thing you would do with somebody sick. You 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 need to get them into water. You need to get water on them, water in them. Fluid, fluid, fluid. And to keep them hydrated so that they don't burn alive, so to speak. The flame doesn't destroy them. And But the fever now is going to work to try to, to rout and destroy whatever bacteria, pathogen, whatever is growing in their system. So keeping hydrated is very important. This is why most people, when they catch like Ebola, they vomited themselves to death. And this this is just part of it. So you keeping a person hydrated would be the first process, the main process. So it, you're still dealing with symptoms, but and in the interim, you also try to see if you can do anything to boost their immune system. And anything in that realm will help the person to overcome the disease because the disease is going to run its course it's just a matter of how long how long it's going to run its course so again if i'm um and so if you look at it normally as i say um 
how I was talking this week is you normally they, you normally see whatever is going on in life. This could be health, could this could be personal. The focal point is how we look. Well, in the natural world, you're not focused on how we look or in the biblical method, you focus on how we are. And you're not trying to cover the information. You're trying to sound an alarm and address the problem. Not trying to say, well, we're going to look bad if we address it this way or that way. And as I say, you notice almost all the epidemics that have broke out. At first, they try to hold it back because they don't want to make it sound like, well, we have a problem here. And then as the things keep getting worse, you keep hearing more bad news because they're saying, well, this is more difficult. And as I say, when you see the coronavirus, you see this week what I've been talking about thus far applies very easily. So I'm going to read it one more time, then we'll go to some text and talk more about this idea of the transmission of the disease, how to deal with it. So notice here again, I said, better to live life as I am in the world, but I'm not off the world as much as possible. Why? Uh, the Gentile system were built for them and not for the righteous. So they view things differently. So whether you're talking about the mainline church or you're talking about like a hospital system, their way of dealing with sin or with disease is the same. It's the same philosophy. A doctor and a regular theological pastor has the same methodology of dealing with disease, whether it be the sin disease or the disease, physical diseases. They deal with symptoms. They don't ever get to the root of the problem because their idea is you hit it with drugs. There's no lifestyle modification and there's nothing natural you can do. We approach life differently. We approach spirituality differently. We believe that there's cause and effect and that you have to know how to deal with not just the symptoms, but also the root cause. So there's some of that I'm going to talk about and you'll see how clear this is. And they even abuse and oppress their own. So we worse. So if I'm in the system, um, you know, I'm going to get it. So I try as much as possible not to get there. And if you have to get there, you understand, you know, pray God for mercy. Because you, they, you know, you could you, a lot of people end up dying in the system. Now, as I say, it all for emergency surgeries and stuff like that. But one has to understand you're trying to not get to that point. And if you do get to that point, you just pray God for God's blessing and mercy upon you. But you try your best not to get to the point where you need those things. Uh, and as I say, as much as possible. Notice here, um, hence, it is best to live as independent and self sufficient as possible from their system with a healthy dose of suspicion. So that's why anytime there's an outbreak, there's all these conspiracy theory. And the reason why, because a lot of what they're doing is they're creating these conspiracy theories by trying to smother the information, trying to limit it. And then when it comes out, everybody say, ah, you see, we were telling you. And they justify conspiracy theories. But I understand why they do it. They do, they smother information because they don't want to look too bad. They want to look like they have it under control. Like their great medical system has no flaw in it. And the only quackery that goes on is people who believe in natural. And that's the premise. And so if you believe that, you know, water treatment can be used to help diseases, dietary changes can be used, you must be an idiot. idiot. So... The, then when their system is falling apart, they try the best to cover it, to, to make it seem, oh, we have this under control because our system is bulletproof. You know, you have a disease, you, all you need to do is hit it with some drugs and it will work. Now, most of the diseases now are drug resistant. So how long are you going to keep that facade that your system is not bulletproof? You know, the diseases are proven otherwise. So notice in First John chapter 2, verse 15, 1 John 2, verse 15, our main text for this week. 1 John 2 verse 15 through 17 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, I could include meat eating, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the world, but is of, not of the Father, sorry, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So when I read this text, as I say, it 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 is just I I can see how the system does itself. It it is always about just to show off and say we can do this and we can do that. And there's a lot of advancements, but we can't get caught up into all the hype. You know, you look at the most powerful advancements when it comes on to cancer, and they just keep piling up dead bodies. So it it, it is it is it is a lot of embellishment. 
and that's what Lauren says. You have to pull yourself away from that system and learn that there might be some benefits to some surgery or something like that, but you can overplay it and make it sound like it's a god and all you're doing is just having people just dying like left, right, and center. Um, and people keep running for cancer, running to, uh, away from cancer, but they're still dropping dead. So there has to be other things to explore uh, and not make a god out of something. But as human beings, always over-embellish what they have. Notice here, um, there is, um, notice here that this concept here of the practicality of everything is often ignore you know like when you think about medicine you the, this is like strinath and nothing it's on a camel right why because just take this pill this a pill for every ill you take this pill but we're not going to talk about not, things you can do practical so could that pill still be taken and do something practical yeah i'm not going to argue against that but in the meantime, probably you want to do some dietary change, some lifestyle changes. You're going to do some things mechanically. You know, if you're sick, you have a flu and it's affecting your lung, well, probably you need to go get yourself a filter so that you're breathing as much fresh air as possible and hear that it's being treated as possible. Probably you need to go outside a little bit or get some fresh air from your window if you're laying in bed, you see, just be able to keep the temperature at warm. Probably you need to make sure that your house is not damp. Probably you need to make sure, not probably, but you need to, sorry, I need to say this very specifically. So you know, this is not hypothetical I'm talking about here. This is bulletproof. You need to get some fresh air. You need to either get outside or get your window and nail some fresh air. You need to have, if you can't afford to filter, and if you can, also process the air that you breathe in so that it is sterilized. So as you breathe it in, it can affect your lungs positively. You need to drink water. You need to have some water baths uh, where you have certain things like either Epsom, Epsom salt and stuff like that in the bath. You need to drink teas that are, are with herbs like pleurisy to clear the lungs out, um, like yarrow to clear the lungs out. So these specific herbs that are good licorice that are good to clear the lungs and to deal with that type of problem so it's not that the pill for the ill can help but you cannot be in their mindset and say the only thing you just need is one pill and when that one pill failed then what then you're dead it's not worth killing yourself off like that so you still do what you can for yourself and apply a wholesome um wholesome therapy for the sickness but when you're in a system just like with a church a church would tell you just pray that's why i said the pastors and the and the medical people are in the same mindset just pray just believe yeah well probably you need to do something also and if you say that there's a lot of crazy people in our in our society in the church will say oh no you can't you shouldn't do anything just 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 take the prescription that's it or just pray and just believe god will fix it well, you know, there's some changes you can make in your life that will improve your morality and your integrity. Probably you need to stop stealing and lying on people. That will probably make you a better person. But it's all to just pray and just claim a blessing. Yeah, no, you probably need to start being kind to people and stop being so aggressive with your speech. And that will start cleaning up your mad head. But you see, people, don't, they don't want to do that. So the religion and the, 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 and the, 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 the medical, they're, they're lined up. It's, it's, it's about just saying stuff that are not real, but we believe in not embellishing and showing off and just simply say, hey, look, it, you know, it's okay to take some herbs, take some echinacea, some golden seal to boost your immune system, to clean out your, 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 your sino, sinus passages, whatever you have, mucous membranes, to clean out those mucous membranes all over your body with the golden seal and the echinacea to stimulate the immune system. You do those things and the results, uh, even if you, even if, you know, somebody said, well, I believe in taking the drugs. Um, even if you're doing that, it's not going to hurt you. You know, I don't understand how people become so belligerent to say drinking water. Uh, do that if you're going to do that, but at least do the natural also. 
have some things natural on board. You know, if if this is October, this is not October, but if this was October, go ahead and buy some of those things to have them ready. You know, buy some, you know, oil of oregano so you can mix it, as I said last week, with some olive oil and take it to clear out any bacteria or viruses you have in your throat. It's not going to hurt. You know, but some say, oh, no, I just need antibiotic. You know, you, that's just foolish. You do naturally what the body calls for. If you're sweating, you drink more water. If, you you know, you're feeling a fever, you drink even more water, you do a bath, you take some herbs to clear out the fever and help overcome the bacteria. You do naturally. Now, I know somebody say, oh, no, you just need to do what the doctor said. I said, but they're in a different mindset. As I say, the spiritual and the natural, the same. The rebellion is in both both worlds. So, we, we don't believe in casting spells. A lot of time what prayer is for most people is spells. We believe that you pray and you act. And you act according to your prayer. You act according to your, your, your requests. If you're saying, Lord, I want you to bless me, you also need to go work. You need to start a business. You need to do something to go get that blessing. If, you know, if you're, you know, Lord, I'm looking for a spouse, then you need to go, you know, Lord, I need a spouse. You need to go look for the spouse. You know, you just pray for the spouse and expect the Lord to bring the spouse on a stork or something. So you, you act accordingly. If somebody said, Lord, you know, I'm having an infertility problem. Well, you know, f- there goes the word infertility. Then you need to start eating and, and living as if you want to be fertile. You know, if you want to fertilize anything, that you put nutrients in it and fertilize the thing. So the thing needs fertilizing, so you fertilize it. And then, then we can keep praying and saying, God, you know, make me fertile. And then you act according to the prayer. And the, the healing, that's the healing, because oftentimes the healing is in that prayer. Somebody said, we mean the healing is in prayer. And, and you acting upon what you're praying for. So you want to be fertile, then, you know, you start to fertilize. You know, you say, so I say, what is infertile? Is it your whole body or one part of your body? Most of the time it's the whole body. And then you fertilize the whole body. And then you fertilize the part that needs to get pregnant or get impregnated with a child. And you so you take specific herbs to fertilize that part. And then you keep praying that the fertilizer work. And then you claim the fertilizer will work. You say, God, you make this fertilizer, this 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 red raspberry um, leaf. You make this fertilizer, Lord, this Dam- Damiana. And I hope this fertilize my eggs and make it ready to have child. And you pray and you work. But the medical system, for the most part, would just say, probably just do in vitro or we, we do what, and then that failed because the person is so infertile that they can't, um, they, the guy can't sire a child and the woman can. And then you see guys out there and they start taking tribulus. I was watching this thing on YouTube where this young man who do, I think he does renovation. And then he was talking about, he, 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 his, he and his, his wife, I think, couldn't get preg- pregnant, the wife couldn't get pregnant. When they did the test, they found out he was the one that is, he was weak. So he had to start taking um, all kind of herbs and he's taking herbs like tribulus and stuff like that and to bring up his numbers so that, you know, the, the, the little man could swim. And that's what it is. But you could pray all day long and have somebody anoint you with oil and all kind of stuff like that. A man needs to take some herb to fertilize yourself so you can be fertile. So we pray and we work. So we have a different view of health and how to treat the body than the general Christianity and the general secular scientific community because they just view it as, I don't know, I don't even know what they view sometimes because I don't understand how the simple concept of nutrients does not. I remember one doctor challenged me on this one time. I was in the hospital visiting somebody and I said the person needs some food for the blood. I had doctors say the, the blood is made from the bone marrow. That's what the doctor looked at me and said. Uh, you know, the, why the person need food or something like that, something crazy like that. And I look at a doctor and I'm like, you know, that's what the Bible talk about. You don't learn wisdom from um, scientific studies. <laughs> it's just silly. I just look at him and he's crazy. You know, blood is made in the bone marrow, really. Or the thin air. So anyhow, so the, the, you, you, you get some nutrients so if the person is starving, you give them nutrients. If the person is infertile, you give them nutrients. But the regular general Christianity, 
theological based Christianity. The, 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 they, they don't believe in nourishment. Neither nourish the believer. You know, the Bible talks about in Ephesians that you edify. They don't believe in this edification. They, they just believe in hocus pocus, the spells, and their potions, like the witch, which is of the past. You know, so I, as I say, I'm never going to say those potions don't have any value. But in the meantime, you feed the system, make the system stronger, and you abstain from certain things. And you will get the blessing. So you're not just claiming blessing. You avoid certain bad things and you will notice the blessing. So now to what's going on, the coronavirus and the flu. So notice that all the recent epidemics or animal-based uh, zo zo zoology type diseases, have you ever noticed that? So all these diseases, whether we're talking about drug-resistant diseases, they're all animal-based diseases, Ebola, tuberculosis. And when I say animal-based, I mean they're coming from the animal kingdom, not from the human um, part of the species. Ebola, tuberculosis, mad cow, hoof and mouth disease, SARS, swine flu, salmonella, coronavirus. All of these have been outbreak where we are partaking of the animal. The animal is disease. We eat the animal. We get the disease. Or we come in contact with the animal get the disease. But most, most of these were eating the disease. So keep that in mind. So what, what we're talking about, most of these epidemics and most of the things that we deal with, even cancer has been very widely proven in the medical system that is a disease that you mainly eat. Now, some of the cancers like lung cancers are cancers that you smoke the disease. But most of it, you're eating your cancer. So we have a different view of health. We view health that... You, you not only clean and nourish, cleanse and nourish, but also you abstain. We abstain from the animal primarily because the disease, you eat your disease. Now, again, same thing. You have people who are new agers. They abstain from animal because they want to treat the animal nice. They don't want the animal to be killed or to be abused. We abstain from the animal because we're avoiding the disease. It's a different view, point of view. This is not the mainline point of view. We're very unique in this view of why we shouldn't eat animals. Uh, most like, for instance, the Indians don't eat a lot of animals because they believe the cow is holy, but they'll drink the milk from the animal. We don't believe in um, anything to do with animal because the disease is in the animal. You see, so, you know, we don't have to take, if a woman is pregnant, we don't have to worry about, oh, she shouldn't eat fish because of the mercury. We just don't, we just don't partake of none of that stuff. We just eat the seaweed and we're good. So drug resistance, and again, they've proven scientifically that if if there's a certain amount of contaminant in the in the waters, that the plant has less per whatever uh, than the animals, because most contaminant contaminants are stored in the fat of the of the either the plant or the animal, and so animals tend to concentrate more more you know chemicals toxins in their fatty tissue, human beings also. So we tend to, for that reason also, we tend to avoid the animal because this fat is very toxic. So notice here, um, so drug-resistant diseases, Ebola, tuberculosis, mad cow, huff, 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 mouth, SARS, swine flu, salmonella, coronavirus, all of these have been outbreaks that has happened recently. And all of them is come from eating animals. Now in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44, 6 and 47 Leviticus 11 verse 46 and 47 it says this is the law of the beast and of the fowl fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and every creature that creepeth upon the earth so most actually this is the last two verses in chapter 11 so if you read chapter 10 chapter 11 so forth in Leviticus you find there a lot of things about the clean and unclean, what sh food should be eaten and what food should not be eaten. So this is just a summary here at the end. Verse 47, all of those laws were given. You know, don't eat pig, don't eat bats, don't eat rats, don't eat, you know, camel. All these things were laid out not to be eaten. Spiders, all that stuff. Um, and I throw in there crows, buzzards, none, none of that was supposed to be eaten. Uh, lobster, shrimp, Chimps should not be eaten. Verse 47, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So first thing there, for us, we believe in Genesis 1.29, which is to eat a plant-based diet. This is a perfect diet. 
But God, because of the rebellion of the children of Israel, gave them permission um, because of their gripe, griping and complaining to eat animal. But he said, if you're going to eat the animal, these are the animals. If you're going to eat animals, these are the animals you should eat and these are the animals you shouldn't eat. What are they? The animals that are, we normally say, are vegetarian. These are the animals you eat. These are the animals you shouldn't eat. The animals that are like scavengers, you should not eat. Animals that um, don't have a method of cleaning out the disease from themselves, shouldn't eat. So, this is where it is. So, if you notice, most of these outbreaks are directly from animals that should not be eaten. Clear and simple. Or, if it is an experience like mad cow disease, this was an animal that was supposed to be a vegetarian that they had fed sheep. So, when the sheep got dead and they, they couldn't put the sheep out, to the sheep carcass to, to market, they would ground up the sheep with other feed and then feed it to the cows. So, and if there was a dead cow, they'll feed the cow to cow and they'll feed sheep to sheep. So the sheep got sick, the cow got sick and they came down with this weird disease because again, this was a violation of nature. Human beings violated nature, then they created a disease the disease was man created by his craziness. And they feed dead cow to dead cow, dead sheep to dead to cow, <laughs> dead cow to cow, dead sheep to cow, and vice versa. The cows and the sheep were eating animals. They got sick. Their sickness is what we call, is similar to what we call today um, Parkinson's. If you look at mad cow, you look at Par Parkinson's disease, it's the same symptoms, it's the same shaking. Um, and loss of um, central nervous system control. So you see this, the, a lot of the outbreaks that we've had in the last even 20 years, we don't even go back more than 20, 30, I don't even think 30 years, are, are something connected to these animal consumption. And especially to either, if it's a clean animal, as the Bible call it, that's why we don't believe in, we believe just go to the straight, to the cleanest diet, which is the plant-based diet. If it's a clean animal, it is normally some wickedness that human beings were doing. And it creates a disease in the animal. Or if it's, a, you know, whether it be chicken, whatever. And so you can get salmonella, tuberculosis, um, and so forth from the chicken. And then, might cow from the cow but other than that you come around with something like eating these exotic animals uh, i guess that's what you call it the exotic exotic so or you get these dirty animals like swine you come up with a swine flu epidemic why because after a while the the swine pass on the disease and it becomes now a disease that human beings can catch and pass on and yet the bible told us not to eat pigs because pigs are the dirtiest animals. If you drop dead, the pig will clean you up. That's what it's made for. It's like a crow or buzzards. They're there to clean up dead carcasses and keep the earth clean. They're, they're garbage eaters. Same thing with shrimp. Same thing with lobster. So that's why the Lord said, don't eat it. If you drown, the lobsters will clean up your body, and clean up all that decay. That's what God put it there for. It's very good for that. So you eat a disease animal like that, you're more susceptible to disease. And see, so so part of the health biblical health message is you avoid disease carriers and avoid uncleanness and you maintain a clean body, a clean mind, and a clean surrounding, and then you nourish the system. It's a different way of dealing with disease. Now, again, if the disease is running scores, can you ever do something for this emergency? No problem with that. But understand, you can't ignore doing these steps first. So you find all these disease outbreaks, including the coronavirus, are sourced back to animals and especially eating animals. When you, you look at the coronavirus, it broke out because they, they were eating these. Because in China, they eat anything that moves. So they eat cats, dogs, bats, all this thing. Well, you flip over to Africa when they had the Ebola outbreak. It was a similar thing. They were eating bush meats. They were eating, um, I think, a monkey. They were eating a rat, rat. And all those animals had the Ebola. And for them, they don't see anything wrong with eating these things because, again, most of these places, they they don't, I don't think they even believe, they, they have some Christianity there, but many of that is just paganism. 
So there's just there and China would be in a similar situation when they come on to diet, just eat anything that moves and you end up with all these weird diseases. So this is again a different view of it. So for us, um, which they did the same thing, but you notice China keep having these outbreaks because China eat anything. So um, Chinese, I should say, eat anything. So you keep having these outbreaks like SARS and stuff like that. And there's going to be more coming out of there because if you're eating dogs, there's nothing about the smell of a dog and the look of a dog that you think that should be eaten. Uh, uh, there's nothing about any animal that should be eaten, period. But if you smell a wet dog, it is amazing. And you can't think that somebody's going to chop that up and eat that thing. The smell is like, would tell you, I think there's something wrong. Same thing with a pig. You look at a pig. There's something about that pig that you should look at it and say, that filthy thing should not be eaten. But that never stops anybody, right? My chapter 24, verse 7. And often because of our diet, and you know, a piece of bacon, it looks so it looks so nice and, and I think it's reddish and white. Uh, so probably it looks appetizing. Uh, but the smell of that stuff is like it's, it turns your stomach. Notice in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, Matthew 24, verse 7, it says, For the nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine, pestilence, earthquake in diverse places. So if you read this um, statement here, um, you know, Energy White commented in the statement, she says that they, they, when you know there's about to, things are about to break off, we're coming closer to the end of time. She said there's going to be a general engagement. So there's always been wars, there's always been pestilence, and there's always been earthquake. But when you, you said there's a, you see a time when there's a general engagement where this, you know, and notice it in diverse places. So when this becomes like like a, a one, two, three punch that constant, constantly go off, then you know something is wrong. And, you know, if 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 you looked at the last, this, this the last few weeks of this year so far, it make you really wonder what's going on. Because there is wars, kingdoms shall rise against kingdoms. And, you know, there's even what we call rumors of wars, and then wars stop, nothing happens. Then there's famine. You know, I have no major famine going on. I could be wrong, but I can't remember. So I wouldn't throw the famine there in there. Um, at this point, so we don't. I don't see a de definite general engagement. But I don't know what will be a, uh, <laughs> will be announced before the end of the month. Uh, then there's pestilence. This is a pestilence. Uh, pestilence can be the drug ep epidemic. That's a pestilence. It's something that is um, tormenting people. And it's causing people to die. And this coronavirus and then the flu epidemic is a pestilence. Then earthquakes in diverse places. Yesterday they had an earthquake 7.7. .7. That's massive, but it was out of sea. So at least it wasn't close to the land. That happened in the Caribbean. In Romans chapter 8, verse 22. Romans 8, verse 22. So we notice here that, as I mentioned before, that this is one of the mark of the last days, pestilence. And we constantly have outbreak of these pest pestilence from these animal based um diseases not lifestyle based diseases but animal based diseases notice Re Re romans chapter 8 verse 22 i want to say animal based because somebody said well what about malaria because not, not like malaria and chicken goody and those type of disease you don't eat it you carry it, you catch it by a vector or something so i'm talking about more of these pestilence that you eat the, the disease the animals get it because you interact with the animal and got it all right um, primary on your plate. So we keep going. In Romans chapter 8, verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation grown it and travail it in pain together until now. So I believe this discussion here, I was talking to my sister yesterday where we were talking about this idea that it's the mercy of the Lord while there's a general teaching and belief in these last days about eating plant-based and even eating as much raw as possible. Because when you think about that, right? Look at the genetical weakness in people. All this uh, problem where kids born with autism and various different genetic weakness. Then the general problem where so many people eat in this meat-based diet and are so obese uh, from it. So you think about it, it's God's mercy. Why? To save, I believe, some alive in His mercy to make there be a push in our time for a plant-based diet. 
because the disease in animals, if you look at what's going on in the animal kingdom, where the animals are dying off at massive rates, that should tell you you shouldn't eat it. The mere fact that, as you know, an animal could be walking today and by tomorrow dead. So you don't want to eat that. You know, the animals are sick. And when you look at animals, you know, I don't care. It, it, no matter if it's somebody's pet, if it's a dog, or some animal out there in the wild, it looks sick. So that is, it's God's, I'm just so thankful for the mercies of the Lord in bringing to life, because think about the dark ages when they were being killed by the bubonic plague. They had lost sight of the Bible, hence they lost sight of the clean and unclean rules in the Old Testament in Leviticus, and they were just being wiped out by plagues. The Lord in his mercy to you and I give us a biblical message where we could stay away from cat, dog, fish, mouse, rat, chicken, beef, pork, whatever. And so we don't have to be constantly being destroyed in our bodies day in, day out by the meat. The animals are sick. You see fishes dying off. No matter if it's a small fish or a large fish, you see starfishes dying. You see um, animals dying by the boatload. More than that. Last week they said a million fish, no, million birds um, near Alaska area died because there was a warm sp spot of water that killed us. They claim over a million birds. This is some unreal stuff going on. And some of it most people are not even hearing about because it comes up in the news and it disappears because there's something that's crazy going on. So we want to stay healthy by staying away from the animals. Uh, notice here, this is volume 2 of the Testimonies, page 63, paragraph 3. Volume 2 of the Testimonies, page 63, paragraph 3. The liability to take disease is increased tenfold by meat eating. The intellectual, the moral, and the spiritual powers are depreciated by the hab habitual use of flesh meat. Meat eating deranged the system but clouds the intellect and blunt the moral sensibility. The person become animalistic when they eat animals. So we want to stay away from animals. Um, in Genesis 3 verse 14, Genesis 3 verse 14, and it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So the focal point here in this text is the serpent. The serpent became cursed. And as you know today, as beautiful as snakes are, they're snakes. <laughs> so you're afraid of them. Um, but it says it included in the curse the even the cattle. And we can see the curse as work, work terrible results. Notice here again why we are different from in our philosophy. Biblical Christianity is different from evolutionists. See, the evolutionists say everything is evolving and getting better. We believe everything is devolving and getting worse. And we are close to the end of the 6,000 years of human history. And since sin, uh, we since sin, because we don't know how long life was before sin. So since sin, this experiment has wreaked havoc on the earth, on the human beings, our bodies, and on the animals. Hence, it's best to stay away from the animals because we find that the animals are diseased because of the curse, the degeneracy. While they believe now that the animals are evolving and they're evolving and they're getting better, and they're getting healthier, we believe that we're getting sicker. And all the evidence points to the Bible, that the Bible is true on this. But the scientists... They believe in evolution, so they think we're getting stronger. And you see, as I said, there's more children being born with all type of debility. Straight from the womb, their parents basically are not fertilized. They have no fertilizer being um, put in their body. So they can't, the kids come out weak, the kids come out with all kind of um, diseases or children coming out like that. And yet the scientists go look in their face and tell them, you're evolving, you're doing better. Mary, enjoy your child that, is debil that have debilities. Very weird. 
But that's the society we live in. That's why we have to be separate from that society in our philosophy. We can't live like that. And so because of that, we have to try to put more nutrients into our body. We have to make more effort through sense modernity to um, clean and sterilize and do what we have to do to cleanse ourselves. We have to abstain from things that are diseased. But most people don't see that as an issue because they think, ah, you know, I made my appetite run my my my, my, my life. I wrecked my body. So continue here. Notice here, this is, again, this is uh, a statement, an unpublished testimony uh, written in 1898 by NGY. It says here, disease in cattle is making meat eat in a dangerous manner. The Lord curses upon the earth, upon men, upon beasts, upon the fish, and a and as transgression become almost universal, the curse will be permitted to become as broad and as deep as the transgression. So I pause there. You think about it. This is written over 100 years ago. Where we at now, the transgression is unbelievable. You know, I remember I was reading years back, a few years, yeah, you know, quite a few years back, where some of these crazy people, they would they were doing like cow, cattle farming, and they'll mix cement in the feed and give it to the animals to try to hope that the cement stays in the body and make the animal heavier. People are crazy. And then feed it to their fellow human being. You tell me, man. Now, disease is contracted by the use of meat. The diseased flesh of these dead carcasses is sold in the marketplace. And disease among men is the sure result. So you, you have these diseased bats they were selling in China. Well, disease is going to be a sure result. How can you eat something like that? This is crazy. Um, sure result. The Lord would bring his people into a position where they will not touch or taste the flesh of dead animals. They need to touch it. The things are so diseased. There is no safety in eating the flesh of dead animals. And in a short time, milk, milk of cow will also be excluded from the diet of God's commandment keeping people. So you notice, like as I say, the cow is holy, so many Hindus don't eat the holy cow, but they'll drink the holy milk. This, again, will, cons- you know, this is just, milk is just liquid meat. That's all it is. And cheese is just liquid meat, constant, concentrated. I mean, spoiled and concentrated. Should never be eaten. In short time, there will be, uh, it will not be safe, uh, safe to use anything that comes from the animal creation. Short time. It's a hundred and something years later. Uh, notice in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1 to 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Notice here, the Bible describes what's going to be happening uh, in the time of the destruction of Jerusalem and also in our end times. Similar setup. Notice here, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth nor mercy nor knowledge of God in the land. So there's issues going on and God is dealing with man in some severe ways because man has rejected truth, but they have no mercy also. So if you want mercy, you give mercy to others. Verse 2 says, By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touch your blood. I always say this, that most of the mass murders that happen has to do with adultery. Or has to do with some man want to have control over his wife and lose control of her and then decide that she must die. Verse 3, Therefore shall the land mourn. And that's what we're seeing here. We're told in the last days that there will be so much pain and suffering that there no bomb will be able to heal. And we're seeing every year it's ramping up. It's getting worse and worse. And as it gets worse, people don't want to hear truth. And they just fun, fun, fun. And they're just wicked, wicked, wicked. And the, the rebellion is getting almost universal. Notice here, the land shall mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Languish is a long-term suffering. And we see this because many of these diseases, um, the person just, just don't die like that. The person suffer long. These are long, emphysema, long cancers, long-term suffering. You know, people say, oh, you have one life to live, so I'm going to live it. And then they spend half of that life nursing a disease 
It's not worth it. Everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field. And we can see the animals, they're diseased. Look at some of these animals, they look so mangy. The beast of the field and with the fowls of the heaven. Yea, the fishes of, fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. If you don't see that happening right now, I, I, as I say, you live on a rock. You see what, look at, look at what's going on with the fishes. Just, they're just dying in massive numbers. And yet you say to people, we need to readjust the way we pollute the, the oceans, the pollute the rivers. They'll be like, nah, you're trying to limit our money-making ability. <laughs> and this is what they say. It would be crazy. And it, you don't see that you're killing the fishes. And then they say, nah, and then they go fish and go eat the fish. <laughs> it would be like, yeah, we crazy. Uh, I sometimes see people going to certain lakes and go fish. And I'm like, yeah, you don't see them at the house around this lake with their septic tank feeding all that, um, what do you call it, feeding all that uh, fecal matter in the, in the lake. And you go fish in that lake and eat it. You know, even recently, when a lake near me, I think it's Lake Apakong, it's called. I think last summer, the summer gone last year, they had to shut it down from swimming because there was so much fecal matter. It was surrounded by houses. All those septic systems leaching all that fecal matter, and then people go swimming it and take a few, you know, drink a few mudful of feces. It, it is unreal. It is, it's diluted feces. So it is unreal. So this is what it is. So the, the area, yeah, as I say, it's a different view the Bible teaches of health than the regular system. So yes, the health departments, they'll say, oh, no, no, there's too much fecal matter in this water this year. You can't swim, which is good. Uh, I believe in that. That's what needs to happen. Uh, but some of it is kind of obvious. But only, I guess, if you you understand natural health, you see it as obvious. So the land shall mourn, and everyone that in it shall languish. And you see, as I say, um, whatever, any, anytime you pick up any type of disease, whether it be a lifestyle disease or a genetic weakness or a disease from an animal, it will plague you. And then some of these diseases, I can't remember which one I was reading about, that it's one of these like SARS or whatever, that it will just keep coming back. You could have five years later after you've overcome the disease, it's still in your system, and it could jump back at you. That's some nightmare stuff. Here, so that's the, talking about languishing, and so that's why we want to be able to take this serious and stop, get off the, the the animal diet, leave the fish and the beef and the chicken, and leave all that stuff alone. It's not necessary. Somebody said, "Well, Christ ate fish two thousand years ago, when human beings could go days without eating." We don't have that body. You remember, Christ could fast forty days and fortnight. Most people can't even fast twenty four hours. Our bodies have become weakened. And that's what the Bible teaches us. Our body is severely weakened, but there's people who read that and don't understand that because they never noticed that narrative in the Bible. You notice in the Old Testament, there's almost no mention of disease as we know it modernly. Most of these diseases happen in the New Testament time, which is over 4,000 years after Adam and Eve sinned. And the disease, the body has become weaker and weaker. And now we're at a stage where, as I say, People, kids are coming out stillborn, okay. They, mother and, and nothing. There's not. And you look at the mother. You think I don't know even know how she brought a child to even seven months. She look in, 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 emaciated. And nothing there, and she's only twenty something, thirty something. And nothing there, eating bagels and cream cheese for years. And nothing there. There's no nourishment. With the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven. So we have a different view. Um, of the whole process and the whole system. Um, a few more statements. 14 manuscript released 297. 100 years ago, she said, the whole creation was involved and today the animal languish under the, the curse. Disease prevail among them at an alarming extent. Cancer and tumors are very often seen on the animals, I should say, and the, and the animal part. The, the, the tissue of swine are peopled with living creatures, unbelievable. Yet this living mass is eaten and relished by men and women. Tuberculosis consumption is communicated by the practice of meat eating, and thus the disease is extended. Years back, people questioned this because there was never a clear proof that what she's saying there was 
real. People just didn't believe it. You know, I guess it was difficult to believe that if you see an animal with cancer and you eat the cancer, you're eating cancer and you're going to get cancer. It was a very difficult thing for science. And if you go to probably a doctor locally and ask him, he probably think you're crazy still. That's how ter terrible it is in that world. They just can't really believe that if you see a swine and he has flu, you probably eat the carcass, you probably get flu. It, it, it's still hard for people to believe because guess what happened? The diet is telling you, hey, don't believe that. Just keep eating that swine. Uh, physicians who claim, this is, um, again, uh, this is PC162. Physicians who claim to understand the human organism ought to not encourage their patients to subsist on the flesh of dead animals. So you see that there. So you subsist. You know, there's when you think about the way I used to eat, it, it is true, you're really subsisting on dead animals. You just need to eat a lot of buried carcass. They're just, the fridge is their coffin. And you go in the coffin, get out one of those frozen bodies, and you tie it out, season it, and eat it. And you're eating dead carcass with all its diseases and all its weaknesses. You know, you look at certain people, you wouldn't want to eat them, would you? Because they look so diseased. You see somebody with a, <laughs> you see somebody with a, 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 a roller, what do you call it, in a, in a, in a wheelchair, <laughs> Are having some type of walking stick. You want to say, man, that person make a good barbecue. But you could see an animal like that and they'll cut that animal up and feed it to you. And you'll be like, man, I'm eating a diseased carcass. They should point out the increase of disease in the animal kingdom. The testimonies of examiners is that very few animals are free from disease and that the practice of, law, of eating large enough meat is contracting disease. Diseases of all kinds, cancer, tumors, um, tuberculosis and a number of other ill, Ill in like infections. If men would subsist on food that God had so abundantly provided without having first passed it into the animal organism and become sinew and muscle and then take it in second hand by eating of the corpse, his health would be much better in short. So his health would be much better in short. As you say, if probably um, Noah eat animal corpse. It would affect him but little, probably. His, his vitality would be stronger. And even today, you can see that very clearly. There's some people there, they have such strong immune system and such strong system that they would they would survive um, better. They're still going to be affected, but it's just they, they, they're much, have much virility. But you can see the effect of a lifestyle of fun and games on them. You can see that it whip their buttocks. And it's the same thing you see with between male and female. Female um, scientifically do worse on drugs than male. It just it hits the male, but it takes longer to destroy his body. Alcohol does the same thing. Female will drink the same amount of alcohol to give them a t more terrible effect. So the, the genetics is different. And it's gen genetics between man to man from one male to another male is different. So what I can take somebody as, it will, you know, it will take longer to destroy them. Um, what by probably is okay for me for a while, it will destroy somebody faster. But across the board, you stay away from animals and you find yourself healthier. So we believe again in avoiding certain things, especially animals, partaking of nutrients and cleansing the body. We clean, nourish, and abstain. And when you do this, you find that you're more able to ward off when there is a spread of disease to ward it off or not to catch it. Or if you do catch it, to have it not be as hit you as severe. In Genesis 1.29, it says here, And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. That's your meat. That's the original intention of God. Man was created to eat plants as their meat, plants that bear seed. And that was the original intention. Sin has changed that. But we believe, especially because of the weakness of the human body, over 6,000 years of abuse, that it's best to go back to the original diet found in Genesis 1.29. May God bless you towards this. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I thank you for the blessings of your word. I thank you for the blessings, dear Lord, of the ways that you give us to be able to treat disease and also to avoid disease. May you bless us, nourish us, and strengthen us that we might be like thee. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again live tomorrow morning where we should talk about current events. Until then, I, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm-hmm.